Hello, this is a tutorial for Project Investigators, or PIs, funded by the Human Health Exposure Analysis Resource here and hosted by the HERE Data Center, located at the Icon School of Medicine in Mount Sinai, Department of Environmental Medicine and Public Health. This tutorial will guide the investigator through specimen ID to participant ID mapping, or SIDP ID mapping. In this tutorial, we will review the steps to create the SIDP ID mapping file and required resources. We will review how to submit the mapping file and receive quality control checks. And finally, how to retrieve the shipping manifest and ship your samples. First, let's take a look at what the final product will look like. This is the SID PID map, which serves to record information about your samples, such as linking the sample, SID, to the participant, PID, and providing sample information, such as the sample volume and time of sample collection. The map ultimately serves to A, create a shipping manifest, and B, to link participant demographic and health outcome data to the spe specimen samples via the PID. The principal investigator, or PI, will complete the SID PID map and submit the map to the HERE Data Center website called the Data Submission and Review Portal, aka the DSRP. The link to the DSRP is heredatacenter.mssm.edu. The resources you need to complete your map are below and are found on the DSRP. These include the SID PID mapping template, the SID PID mapping guidance document, and you will also submit your map via the DSRP and retrieve your initial quality control checks. Other resources you need to complete the map include your specimen IDs and a 2D barcode scanner if you plan to scan the specimen ID barcodes directly into Excel. If you do not have the SIDs, you cannot move forward. The HERE Data Center can lend you a barcode scanner if you do not have one. If you would like a scanner, please contact your analyst or HERE support at here support at mssm.edu. Let's first navigate to retrieve the HERE DSRP user manual, which will provide further written directions in completing the SID PID map. Once signed into the DSRP, we click on the upper right hand link to resources. From presentations and publications, we scroll again to the right and click on resources. Scroll down, past some videos, and then we find the HERE Data Submission and Review Portal user manual for HERE PI. We open the document. Here we have the DSRP user manual, which guides the PI through data submissions and retrieval of data. We scroll down to the table of contents and see contents numbers 3 through 3.3 .3 apply to the SID PID map. So first three is mapping here SIDs to PIDs and shipping your samples on page 17. For the remainder of this video, we will not refer back to the manual, so please follow the directions in the user manual after reading them yourself. Next, we will retrieve our SID PID mapping template and guidance document from the DSRP. We go to My Projects page and find your HERE project and click on it. Please note that our example study was created for this tutorial and the data is not real. We see our project information and look to step five, map SIDs to PIDs. Please note whether or not you have completed step, the optional step two, mapping your original subject IDs and specimen IDs to your HERE IDs. We recommend creating these maps to help ensure there are as few errors as possible. If you complete step two, it will pre-populate some information in your SID PID map. So, Click on the map, SIDs to PIDs. Here we're able to download the SID PID map template and the guidance document. As you can see in our template, because we completed step two, we have our PIDs and original specimen slash sample IDs already mapped. Also note the file name the 2020-0001 SID PID mapping template. You will need to keep the file name in order to submit the map to the DSRP. However, you can append at the end to add a unique suffix to distinguish each version. Before filling out the rest of the map, let's review the guidance document and look at, at our example study detail. Here is the mapping guidance document. Please read through this. We'll scroll down now to the description of fields which describes each column that you must fill out in the map Excel file. Note the column header, a description of the field, and whether the field is mandatory for submission. For example, the SID and the PID are mandatory. 
and some fields are mandatory only under certain circumstances, such as if the field is an environmental sample such as water, the environmental matrix must be completed, but the biological matrix should not be completed. Under the shared with lab hub column, we see which information the lab hub will see. The lab will only see certain information as to keep the lab blind to QC information and to keep private health information private. Please note that you will only need to fill out the mandatory fields, but that more information is always better. Scrolling down, we find the codes for the chemical groups for biological specimens and for environmental specimens that will be measured in your samples. Please note that you may be measuring the same chemical group, such as brominated flame retardants, but the code for these chemicals differs whether it is in the biological matrix versus the environmental matrix. Now, let's take a look at our example study. We have a cohort study in which participants had a baseline with two follow-up visits at which samples and health outcome data were collected. In this example, we will have three subjects with seven samples and some exemplary scenarios common in sample collection and measurement. First, aliquots. Second, a duplicate sample for measuring precision. And third, a NIST sample for measuring accuracy. As for the sample themselves, we have a biological matrix sample of urine in which we are measuring phthalates and phenols at the Mount Sinai HERE targeted analysis laboratory. And we have environmental matrix samples of house dust in which we are measuring PFOSs at the North Carolina HERE untargeted analysis laboratory. With this, let's fill out our map. I've opened my mapping template to begin. You will likely be using a 2D barcode scanner to scan the HERE SID into the SID column corresponding to the participant. You can also manually fill out the map, which is what I will do. Let's begin with original subject 3, sample ID 3A. For sample 3A, there are actually three aliquots for the HERE analysis. Since the SID PID map has a row for each specimen sample, I will need three rows for the aliquoted sample 3A. In each of these rows, most of the information will remain the same, but the SID and potentially the sample quantity will differ. I will move down the subsequent sample information to make room for the three aliquots. I paste all of the subject information and input the SIDs for the three aliquots. Now a quick lesson on the SIDs that may be helpful. Note that the aliquot SIDs are identical up until the last two digits, in which case they end in 0, 01, 0, 02, and 0, 03. From each original sample, we will have an SID core, which is the H and subsequent five unique digits. Each SID will contain a letter or letters identifying the matrix of the sample, in this case U for urine. So you can see that the aliquoted samples have the same core SIDs since they're from the same sam original sample, but since they're in different tubes, we number them as such. Great, now we'll fill out the sample quantity and the sample quantity unit of measure for these aliquots. In this case, it's in milliliters. The sample collection date, is 10 19 2014. The month and day of collection are not shared with anyone outside of cheer or publicly. However, the year will be shared publicly as the year is not considered private health information. The sample collection time point is relevant to this study because it is a longitudinal study. The collection time point is not to be confused with the collection date. The time point refers to the study design. In our example study design, the sample was taken at the baseline visit. So I'll write baseline in the time point column, and visit in the time point unit of measure column. This is a urine sample, so we will fill out the biological matrix column using the drop down menu. And we do not fill out the environmental matrix column. The lab hub for the urine samples was the Mount Sinai untargeted lab, and so we'll again choose this from the drop down options. Chemical groups measure, to be measured in urine are the phthalates and phenols. Referring back to our guidance template, we will find the chemical group code. At the bottom of the SIDPID guidance document are the chemical groups. 
We have a biological matrix, so we will find the phenols and phthalates. The codes are UPHTH and Uphenol. Since we are measuring two chemical groups, we will write both groups separated by a comma. Just copy and paste this information for the two other aliquots. Now we'll share the box label and the box position. The box that we'll ship these samples in will be called box one, and we will put the box position as, as A1 through A3. Note that if you are shipping samples that are not positioned in a specific order, you must still fill in the box label and box position columns with something to denote this, such as NA. These samples are not quality control samples, so we will leave the QC flag column blank. We do not have children in this study, just adults, so we will not complete the child PID. Scrolling further right, since our samples are urine, everything from here is elective to complete. However, I will share some information about the samples, such as sample collection method, which for urine is a void, the sample collection temperature of negative 80 degrees Celsius, sample uh, freeze thaw cycles, the number is zero, the sample container type is a two milliliter tube, We'll leave the sample preservative, preservative blank, and the sample shipping condition is dry ice. This elective in information can be helpful if, once the samples are measured, there seems to be an erroneous measurement or an outlier. We can refer back to this shipment information to see if the cause of the outlier measure has to do with its shipment conditions. And the remaining columns pertain to specific matrices such as water or dust. All done with the aliquot. Our next sample is also from original subject three, but sample 3B. We'll put in the here SID. We'll fill in all of the mandatory information, including sample collection time point. For this sample, <clears throat> the urine was collected at visit one for subject three, not baseline. We'll fill in the lab hub and chemical groups same as the previous samples, but update the box position. And we'll fill in the elective information about the sample too. Next sample is sample 3C, which is original subject 3 sample from visit two. We'll update the information for this sample with the ups, updated sample collection date and sample collection time point. We'll update the box position and update the elective information. Noting that the free thaw cycles for the sample were two. The next sample is for original subject number four. We will fill out the sample information, which was subject number four's baseline visit urine sample. Now, for subject four's baseline urine sample, we have a duplicate. So similar to the aliquot samples, we will add a new row and copy the relevant subject information in this case, the subject ID, original sample ID, and here PID. And we will add the duplicate SID. Note that the duplicate SID core is completely different from its parent sample core ID. We'll fill in this sample information, including the exact same sample collection date and time point as the parent sample. And 
the box position. And for QC flag, we will write dupe in this column. I want to emphasize that for a duplicate pair, only one sample should be marked as a duplicate in the QC flag column, while the other sample or the parent sample is not reported as a QC, as you see for subject four. Our next sample is actually not a participant sample. It is a NIST SRM 3673 sample to measure accuracy as a quality control check, and which the lab will be blinded to. For this sample, we will create a new row that contains the project ID and an original sample ID, which we will denote as a type of sample as NIST SRM 3673. The lab will not see this column. For original subject ID and here PID, we will leave these blank since there is no participant associated with the NIST QC sample. We'll fill in the here SID and complete the sample quantity, but we can leave out the sample collection date and time point. But we will fill in the remaining information And for QC flag, we will write QC, not dupe, because it is not a duplicate. If you have any questions regarding QC sample documentation, please refer to your SID PID mapping guidance document, or you can email your analyst at the HERE Data Center or the HERE Data Center help email at here support at mssm.edu. Note that the comments by PI column may be a good spot to include information about a QC sample, say that it is NIST or a low spike control. However, the lab hub sees these comments, so if you mean to keep the QC sample blind from the lab, do not enter information about the QC here. Next, we have some house dust samples for our original subject number four. We add the SID, which as you can see, has a new matrix, HG for house dust. The sample quantity is now in weight in milligrams. And the sample collection time point and date are baseline, the same as the baseline urine sample for subject four. This time, we don't fill out the biological matrix, but we fill out the environmental matrix in the drop-down menu to find housed dust. The lab hub is North Carolina, and after confirming with the SID PID mapping guidance template, our chemical group is EPFAS for environmental PFASs. We will ship our dust samples in a second box but our samples will not be neatly ordered in a matrix, and so I will write NA for the box position column, since the box position column must be filled in for submission. This sample is not a QC. I will fill out the sample collection method, the vacuum, sample storage, storage temp as negative 20 degrees Celsius, zero freeze thaw cycles, the sample container type is a five milliliter conical tube. Shipment condition is dry ice. And now we scroll over to the mandatory fields for dust, including the room in which the dust was collected, which was the bedroom, and the dust sieve size in the mandatory micrometer units, which is 150. That's it for the dust sample. And we'll quickly just fill in the, the dust sample information for subject five, which is their visit number one, another house dust sample, NA, et cetera. We have successfully completed our map. I'll save our mapping file using the file name from the original download 
including the project ID and the text that says SIPID mapping template. There's usually numbers here, which you can delete, but you'll need to keep this text. And I'll save it with an underscore, underscore correct. I save with an underscore correct because we're going to quickly make some errors to this map, simply for the purpose of exemplifying what happens with errors in your map upon submission to the DSRP. To add some errors, let's see how the DSRP QCs the map. When you submit your map, which we will show shortly, the DSRP will disallow upload if there are errors. The DSRP will let you know what errors occur and will check for the following items. That the expected column headers are present, that all SIDs are unique, that PIDs match the project PIDs, and there's only one matrix filled out so that the biological and environmental matrix are both filled out, and that all non-conditional fields are filled out that need to be. Lastly, the DSRP checks that the original sample and subject IDs, if you include them, are correctly mapped. Let's make two errors. So first we will fill out the biological matrix and the environmental matrix at the same time. And second, we'll use the same specimen ID twice. So I'm just going to copy this specimen ID and paste it here so that we see we're reusing the specimen label for two different samples. Now let's upload it to the DSRP. So we're back in the my project page on the here DSRP in the map SIDs to PIDs link and we're going to include a short description for our SID PID map where it's uh, an incorrect map spelled incorrect wrong so now we'll choose the file and upload and we see that we have some errors so first please fill biological matrix or environmental matrix which was our first mistake um, volume SID are mapped multiple times, so this is where we had the same SID twice. And then I think this is just a repeat of the first link of please assign only one matrix to the following PIDs. So now let's go back and upload our correct file to see what that looks like. Let's upload the corrected map. Once you've um, uploaded the corrected map, you will see that it's been validated. And if you go back to your project page, you'll see the uploaded map under the SID PID mappings file section here. At this point, you're not quite done. The map will now be reviewed by your here data analyst for further QC checks. The, the QC checks that the year analyst will check for include that the SIDs match the project SIDs and you're not making up SIDs, that the matrix code matches the matrix in which the specimen is being measured, the SID core will always associate with the same participant ID, and that the here PID is always associated with the same original subject and ID when provided, and vice versa. If these items contain errors, you will be contacted to address the errors and re-upload the map. If there are no errors, your analyst will send you a shipping manifest via email with shipping instructions, including a note to communicate with the Lab Hub to figure out shipping details. You will receive a shipping manifest via email for each lab you send samples to, such as the one shown here for the Mount Sinai targeted lab for our example study. You will need to fill out some project information in the shipping manifest. An important note, do not ship your samples until your map has been approved and you have received a shipping manifest from the data center. This has been the SID PID mapping tutorial for the HERE data center at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Thank you for watching and please, if you have any questions, contact your HERE data center analyst or HERE support at here support at mssm.edu.